We're still talking about frogs this week. Can you remember the frog life cycle? Remember, the frog lays the eggs, the tadpole grows inside the egg, and then the tadpole hatches out, then the tadpole gro grows back legs and front legs, still has its tail, so we call it a froglet, and then the tail comes off and it's a grown-up frog. And then the frog might lay more eggs and the cycle starts all over again. In our story today, we're gonna hear about two friends, a frog and a cat, who are learning about how they grow and change. And the story is called Oscar and the Frog, a book about growing. And it's written and illustrated by Jeff Waring. Let's read it together. Oscar and the Frog, a book about growing by Jeff Waring. One spring day by the pond, Oscar saw some creatures he had not seen before. Frog hopped up. They're tadpoles, Frog said. I was a tadpole before I grew up. Oscar stared at Frog. He didn't look like a tadpole at all. Don't be silly, Frog, Oscar said, laughing. It's true, Frog said, and he told Oscar how frogs grow. At first, I looked like a dot in an egg. The egg was as soft as jelly. I grew in the egg, then hatched out as a wriggly tadpole. I could breathe underwater through gills like a fish. I was hungry for pond weed. It helped me to grow. Later, my gills disappeared as I grew lungs to breathe air with. I grew back legs, then front legs, and my tail started to shrink. After three months, I was a little frog. I kicked my new legs and jumped out of the water to live on the bank. What else hatches out of eggs? Oscar asked. They looked in the pond. Frog showed Oscar some eggs that had been laid under the water. Many water snails lay their eggs in pouches of jelly on stones or plants. Dragonflies lay their eggs on plant stems just below the water. And fish lay lots of eggs. The perch winds hers in long threads around plants, twigs, or stones. They looked on the bank and Frog showed Oscar some eggs that had been laid where it was dry. Many kinds of butterflies lay their eggs on the undersides of leaves. When the caterpillars hatch out of eggs, they eat the leaves. Many birds lay their eggs in nests high off the ground. Here the chicks will be safe from the animals who might want to eat them when they hatch. Ducks often nest on the ground close to water, so their ducklings will be able to swim quickly away from danger. Do plants hatch out of eggs? Oscar asked. No, said Frog. Most plants sprout from seeds. Each plant makes its own kind of seed. The seeds of apple trees are stored inside their fruit. Strawberry plants have their seeds on the outside of their fruit. Poppy plants have tiny seeds. They are light enough to be carried away by the wind. Most seeds ripen above the ground, but the seeds of the peanut plant grow in the earth. Coconuts are the seeds of coconut palm trees and they are huge and they can float. Did I hatch out of an egg or sprout from a seed? Oscar asked. Neither, said Frog. You were born. You looked a lot like you do now, only much smaller, with fur and paws, ears and a tail, and you are hungry for milk from your mother. Why was I hungry for milk? Oscar asked. It helped you to grow, said Frog. Milk for you, pondweed for me, and leaves for caterpillars, and bugs for those baby birds, 
we all need different kinds of food to grow. Oscar stretched. I am so big now, he told Frog. But you're not as big as you will be, said Frog. Are you? asked Oscar. Yes, Frog answered. I've stopped growing now. I'm as big as I'm going to get. How long does it take to grow up? Oscar asked. Well, it depends, said Frog. This flower will be full grown in just a few days. But this young tree won't be tall until you are a very old cat. The baby birds will be as big as their parents next spring, Frog went on. But the tadpoles will take three springs or more to be as big as I am. Each living thing takes its own time. Just then, Oscar saw that his mother was coming. What about me? He asked Frog. How long will I stay a kitten? You will be a full grown cat by winter, Frog said, as big as your mother is now. Oscar looked at his mother. She was much bigger than he was. Don't be silly, Frog, he said laughing. It's true, Frog said. Wait and see. They both grow and change, even though it's in different ways in our story. So I have a song that I bet you know about frogs, about five, one, two, three, four, five, green and speckled frogs. Can you do it with me? Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are four speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Because five minus one equals four. Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are three speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Because four minus one equals three. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Three minus one equals two. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there is one speckled frog. Glub, glub. Two minus one equals one. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are no speckled frogs. Glub, glub. What we're going to do now is I want you to get a piece of paper and we're going to do some math adding and subtracting some frogs. Pretend you've got a big, nice pool of blue water, and let's do a little bit of math. So, I was walking by the pond one day, and I saw two frogs sitting on a log. Then I saw two more frogs jump on the log. How many frogs were there all together? How would you write that? Can you write the math sentence that tells me two frogs and two more frogs? How many are there all together? So how would we write to show that we had two frogs and then we had two more frogs and we wanna know how many all together? So we start with our first set. To begin with, we had 
two frogs. Then we have more frogs coming. So if we're putting two sets together, we say plus two frogs plus how many more frogs? Two more. And then when we add them all together, equals how many? Two in this set, two in this set, two plus two equals, that's right, four. So we've got four frogs sitting on that log. Now three of the frogs jumped into the water. How many are left on the log? Can you write that math sentence? How would you show me that there were four and three jumped in the water? How many are left on the log? This time, we start with four frogs. Now, did the frogs join together or go away? Did we add or subtract if they go away? We subtracted. We started with four minus three jumped in. So we take away three. How many are left? We had four. One, two, three, four. We take away three. One, two, three. How many are left? Equals Four minus three equals one. Now there's those three frogs swimming around in the water. And from the bank, two more frogs jumped in the water to swim. How many frogs are swimming in the water now? Show me your math sentence that tells me how we would write that frogs in the water. Remember, those are the three that jumped in last time. And now two more jump in. If we're putting sets together, are we adding or subtracting? We're adding. So we do plus three in the water plus two more jump in. So three plus two. Now we want to know how many all together. Three plus two equals one, two, three, one, two. Put together and count. One, two, three, four, five. Three plus two equals five. So now we've got five frogs swimming in the water. Two more frogs jumped in the water to swim. How many frogs are swimming in the water now? Write a math sentence and show me how you would tell me five and then two more jumped in, how many all together? This time we start with those five frogs and we're going to have two more join them. If we're putting two sets together, we're adding so we put a plus, five plus two more. We're joining two sets together to find out how many. Five plus two equals, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, put together and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five plus two equals seven. Okay, now we've got seven frogs in the water. They're swimming, seven frogs swimming in the water. If three of the frogs get out of the water, how many would be left swimming? How would we write that we start with seven and we take three away, how many are left? Can you write that? This time we're starting with those seven frogs but three of them swam away. So if we're taking away, 
that's minus seven frogs minus three that swam away. How many are left? Well, let's see, we had seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three swam away. One, two, three. How many are left? One, two, three, four. Seven minus three equals four. So now there's four frogs swimming in the water. If two of those frogs swam away, how many would be left? How would you write that math sentence? So we have those four frogs. But this time, two more swam away. So if we're taking away, it's minus four frogs, minus two frogs. How many are left? Four, take away two, leaves or equals two. So now we have two frogs swimming in the water. But if five frogs come back to swim, how many would we have all together? Now we've got those two frogs, but five more come to join them. If we're putting two sets together, it's plus two frogs, plus five frogs equals how many all together? We've got two in this set, five in this set. Now count. I'm going to start with my two and count on. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Two frogs plus five frogs equals seven frogs. 